nice to have seen, I built up this class introducing you to the concepts first, rather than showing you one technique after the other. I find it very difficult to learn something if I'm presented with techniques. I've been to a lot of classes in the HEMA context where I would learn like 20 techniques for whatever weapon, say Langes Messer, and uh, the next day I'll remember three, and when I come back home I can barely recall one of them. Now I think the more promising approach is to understand what makes a given technique work in the first place. So understanding the various principles that are based on both anatomy as well as physics provides you with an understanding and now we are looking at particular techniques and you will know why they um, will work or if you can't get them to work you have already um, the knowledge to check yourself. You can check ah, what's about the angulation of my arm, where's my elbow, is my elbow sticking out, oh I should turn it in so that my back muscles come into play, all these things. And um, this uh, means that actually you, if you move in accordance with uh, martial arts principles you wouldn't even need a single technique because by design anything that you do moving in accordance with these concepts will be a technique anyway. So as soon as you have understood and ingrained into your body all these concepts you don't need technique anymore. We train technique because they convey the principles. So look at technique training like the technique being a container that conveys the principles. So martial arts is not really about, it's not like a, like a necklace and each technique is a pearl and when you have like 30 pearls on your necklace, you'll beat somebody who's got 29 on his necklace and then you have to give in to the one that's 31. Um, 31 pearls on the string. No, it's about learning to apply those principles and these concepts that we have been training the whole weekend. Earlier on we were training based on the drills that we have um, practiced, we were training that assuming here is a bind and assuming he's on top, he comes in, strikes at me because he's, um, you should get control. If you have a small shield, you have to step in so you have perfect, yes, 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 yes. Don't ever stop just because you're on top. You have, uh, he's, yeah. you have uh, the superior bind if you're on top, so he's got the superior bind if he moves on top but he also wants to exploit it by getting um, perfect control. And keep on, keep on moving and making contact with my body. Think of this handle as a dagger, so you want to push that dagger into the opponent. You don't stop halfway. And now I'm really fucked. If he keeps moving, he even puts the boss on me and now I'm completely folded. If I start to thrust, deal with that. No, 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 use your blade. You can control, use your blade and now you could, no, hold that way. You could, you, you could do what you just did. Yeah. Uh, uh, think about the shield. Mm -hmm. Start to, uh, start to use, start to roll it. No, not like that. Stop, start press. Okay. Yay! <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so remember this motion, the snake motion, which is a typical motion in martial arts, and apply this to your shields too. So don't stop. Don't stop in a static fashion. Think about it. Keep on moving. And this is uh, this is something that we will look at with our next technique. So the one counter, by the way, the one counter, just to remind you, the one counter that we uh, learned was he. I try to be on top. He tries to be on top. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, he is on top, so I know he's stronger. I yield, take my turn to be on top myself, and now it's me who's going to kill him. And, Okay, there's another option here. There's another option here. Um, we have here used uh, the concept that the one who is on top has the superior bind, but there are also other uh, qualities 
that define who wins a bind. Do you remember them? So the one, if we look at bind, uh, blades only. So being on top means I have a superior bind. What are the other criteria for who using the edge? Exactly, edge on the flat is stronger, a lot stronger than uh, the flat against the edge. And then finally, leverage. Leverage. leverage, exactly. So, can you strike in my head? So, here, which tried, I ha who has won the bind here? You. Why? You've what? got you leverage, leverage and on top. Leverage and being on top. So, my blade is on top of his. All right? And um, I can strike at, at him here, but I could also start to wind, but here I'm stronger because I have my edge on his flat and then <coughs> keep thrusting at him. So having the edge on is another um, advantage of the crossing. And that applies to the shields too. thing uh, you're going to train next is that when we come when we come to a bind you put your edge on his flat and I want you to use as you once again can you put your edge on my edge so if you if I manage to use leverage here and edge on flat I'm giving him a little impulse it's the same impulse that I used earlier yesterday to break structure remember yeah this Impulse, the same impulse that you use when you clap, when you when you destroy a mosquito, for instance, or when you crack a whip. So it's just this short moment of tensing up. Why don't we want to be tensed up all the time? It slows us down and makes us numb. We only tense up for a split second. So this is something that's quite difficult to train at slow motion. So while a reduced pace helps you to learn techniques, it also creates artifacts and some of the actions that you can pull off at, uh, at a higher speed are difficult to apply at a low speed. But the idea is that once I come here and I manage to put my edge onto his flat, here I do a cut. So it's this action, a little cut. This, is exposed, this exposes his arm here. So that's my first strike. But um, I, have, I will not stop here. I keep on moving behind, yeah, that's good. I keep on moving behind my shield, being true to my original drill, so which is the snake motion. So remember, snake motion. Only now, I am stepping behind my shield. So, the footwork for this technique is, you cut, you give the impulse, and as you turn to the thrust, you step behind your shield. Yeah. So you change your angle of attack uh, with footwork, and that nicely binds him. And look what happens is, first distance is shield on shield exposes limbs now second distance so second distance is edge on man gives you pretty much all the targets if uh, say he's making a, a final attempt to put my leg I put if I put boss on man that's the end of it to try it and then everybody tries it with a partner? Yeah. Okay. So the first, can you do it with your Fine. with your right hand? <laughs> so if you yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at the same and um, <laughs> almost at the same time, not simultaneously, but with a very short delay, because the sword is always trailing, it's always shield sword, shield sword, shield sword. He has just struck at my, uh, at my arm. Now, you keep on going with your drill. Remember, the next thing is a uh, thrust. 
and you move. If you oh, shield is at the wrong, uh, at the right place, at the right place, at the right place. Body could be further over there. Yeah. Right. So your yeah. So your stepping gets you there. Now, as if if I if I now try to cut to your leg, just keep on pa you keep passing it on, putting the boss on, and now I'm completely. Uh, right. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. Try, try it again. I like this. So you're going through three distances in this particular technique. You go through distance one, shield on shield, which. Uh, puts limbs into your reach, so you can access limbs. Second distance is edge on man, that pretty much gives you all, uh, gives you access to pretty much all the targets. And then finally, to completely tie him, that's boss on man, that's the end of it. If you get your boss on the uh, opponent, there's nothing you can do about it. But my part is that uh, once I've once I feel I have the chance, I cut to his leg after his first technique. This is just for him to drain, safeguarding himself against this particular cut. It's not, it's nothing that's going to work for me. So my counter should, should be a different one. Do you have a question? Um, more just because I notice how much of a difference it makes how you step in that technique. Oh, okay. Can you come forward and explain? Um, Basically, because I did this completely wrong in, in the beginning, Cornelius and I from here, opening up and cutting. Now, I, what I would want to do is to step straight out, like this. So you see his rear foot is moving, covering a long distance. This is a good position to be in, but this is about how to get there, so, so keep explaining. Yeah, it. basically, rather than going from here, from having opening him up, Cut in, rather than moving straight in with the leg, I'll gather my leg, small adjustment step, and stepping out to the side. Because we have our hands out here, there's a huge lever. Exactly. Let me just show you both. So, so he's done his first technique, yeah. and now you want to step. So yeah. here's pressure. If he, t if he takes the long step, then um, I can easily destroy the structure. It's not stable enough. Yeah. yeah. And the other option? If he takes, if instead of moving like this, so all the while the rear foot is moving, he is standing on one foot, which makes him susceptible to any pressure. Instead, gather, gather your uh, rear foot, pull it to the front foot, change direction, and step back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so we are first going to train this stepping. So put your shields aside and. Um, then we're going to pick up the weapons to go through the whole technique.